It's beginning to rain, rain, rain in the voice of our Father. Saying, whosoever will come drink of this water, I promise to pour my spirit out on your sons and your daughters. If you're thirsty and dry, they come to the sky. It's beginning. Hello friends, this is Tex Mars, inviting you to worship with us today at Bible Home Church, coming to you from Austin, Texas. It is so wonderful being with you today as we worship our Lord Jesus and we delve into the Word of God. You know, we're going to continue our series in answering the question, will the Antichrist be a Jew. But of course, you can write to us if you'd like to. If you have a prayer need, we'd love to pray for you. It is our privilege and honor to do so. Let us know of your needs. and We'll be glad to pray for you. And at the same time, if you have any comments about our sermon, our services, why well, we'd like to hear from you on that respect too. Um, and if God leads you to give to this ministry so we can continue to reach the lost and encourage those who are already saved around the world. We'd love to hear from you as well. Now, we have some beautiful music before we continue our series. As I said, it's on uh, Will the Antichrist Be a Jew? But, you know, when we're talking about the Antichrist, isn't it wonderful to be reminded over and over, because it never gets old, to be reminded over and over that Jesus is coming again? Well... This great song by the Florida Boys reminds you of that because, you see, the title of this is When He Was on the Cross. Now, what does that have to do with Bible prophecy and the end of time? Well, you know, this song is going to tell you that when He was on the cross, He was thinking of you. Yes, He was thinking of you. And the fact that someday He would come again and... Grab you up, my friend, and bring you to heaven with him where you'll be forevermore if you only trust in him, if you only believe. And so God saw the end from the beginning. Even when he was on the cross, he knew of the end of all things. So here are the Florida boys and a beautiful song. I'm not on an ego trip I'm nothing on my own I make mistakes and often slip Just common flesh and bones But I'll prove someday what I say I'm of a special kind When he was on the cross I was on his mind A look of love The blood was on that scarlet robe And it's painted crimson red Though his eyes were on the crowd that day He looked ahead
And so if many are right in claiming that God requires all Jews to return to their homeland in the last days, why is no one exclaiming, let all the Jews leave America? That would be called racist and anti-Semitic. And yet, according to many Christians today, whether it's you know Jerry Falwell or Billy Graham and others, this is what they say. Well, it says here, very interesting, it talks about this Antichrist, come up with a small people. There is a small number of Jews as compared to other races and other nations today. But then that's what is prophesied to occur. A very small number of people, this Antichrist working deceitfully, shall come up. It says that he shall also forecast devices. That means he will use witchcraft and occultism. And certainly those in the Jewish religion today, in their worship almost of the Talmud rather than the Mosaic Law, and of the Kabbalah and the Zohar, all of the Jewish occultism that exists uh, today. We see this forecasting of devices. Now, also in Daniel, in chapter 11, it says the king, that is the Antichrist, shall do according to his will. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. Well, isn't that what it said in Second Thessalonians 2? He'll go into the great temple of God and declare that he's a god and exalt himself. It says that in Daniel as well. It says he shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods and shall prosper till the indignation is accomplished. For that is determined shall be done. In other words, he's going to speak horrible things against God, blaspheming God, until the indignation is accomplished. It says in verse 37, Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Oh, you see, Daniel is talking about Jehovah, about the great I Am, the God of his fathers. Oh, that's a reference to, uh, that's a reference to Israel, the God of Jacob, of Abraham. But this Antichrist king will not regard, in other words, he will not respect or give honor to the God of his fathers. No, he will not. Verse 38 says, but in his estate, that is in the place of the true God, shall he honor the God of forces and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. God of forces. I've studied that term and I'm convinced of exactly what it means. It means not only the God of war, of death, of military forces, read Revelation 6, but also of the hidden occult realm. Because even in the New Age today, they talk about their worship of the God they simply call the force. Well, here again we have Daniel revealing the last day's Antichrist king will not worship the God of his fathers, but instead will worship a strange God, the God of forces. So he will have to then obviously be a Jew, for he will not worship the God of his fathers, of Abraham Isaac, Jacob. But he declares himself as a God. You see, if you don't have another specific God to worship, but just simply the God of forces, that nebulous term, you can say then, I am the chief God. And he will indeed declare he is the chief God. And this will be in defiance of Jesus' truth. In which our Lord stated, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But the Antichrist, the false Jewish Christ, will say, not so. You can be your own God. For there are many gods, but I am chief amongst them all. Jesus identified the Antichrist as a Jew. You want proof of that? Read John chapter 16, verse 23, wherein he told the Jews, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. 
If another shall come in his own name, him ye shall receive. How much more clear can it be? Our Lord told the Jews, another will come in his own name. Him you will receive as Christ. Now we have today Jewish organizations exalting a strange God. Think about this. You see, the Antichrist will say, do as thou wilt. You are the lawmaker. The Bible says he will think to change times and laws. He will say, do as thou wilt. Now, this is the same thing that the head of the church of Satan here in America, Anton LaVey said, the same as the, his, uh, uh, let's just call him his founding father, Alistair Crowley of Great Britain, who called himself the beast, 666, another founder of Satanism for this century and of this, even the new millennium, because it continues on. No wonder the Antichrist is called the man of sin, the lawless one. Is there any reason then, doesn't it make perfect sense that the ACLU, founded by Jews, run by Jews, operated by Jews today, the Jewish ADL, and such groups, Jewish run as Americans United for Separation of Church and State, all such groups, they're not only liberals, my friends, they are groups that say we do not want God mentioned in public life. We want no public prayers to Jesus. We want no manger scenes in front of city or courthouses or in city parks. We want no Ten Commandments posted in school. These people, my friends, are the ultimate lawbreakers because they are of their God. A strange God of forces. And they wish not for the name of Jesus to be broadcast publicly in the land. I want to say, too, that one of their great leaders was Jezebel. One of the former queens. And the Bible says very clearly in Revelation chapter 2, verse 8, that the spirit of Jezebel will rise again in the last days. Notwithstanding, this is Revelation 2, verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest. That means allow. That woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my children, to commit fornication. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, verse 22. And them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Friends, that Jewish spirit of Jezebel is in churches today. Even in the reaches of the White House of the United States in Washington, D.C. No wonder our children are being killed with death. Not only physical death, such as we've been seeing in Columbine and other places. Columbine High School. I'm talking about spiritual death. Because of the Jewish prophetess spirit of Jezebel. Now, Revelation 13, verses 5 and 6 says, The Antichrist will be given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies against God. Do the Jews speak blasphemies against God? You better believe it. Read the Jewish Talmud. Go to your library. See if you can get it. You might even have to go to synagogue. You will find. They say of Jesus that he was born of a whore. I even hate to say these kind of things on the air. In fact, I'm not going to say any more of what they say about our Lord Jesus. These books are the holy books, so-called taught to rabbis in their seminaries. And they teach these things to others now today. Horrible things that they say about our Jesus. They say he's burning in hell today, for example. They blaspheme the Lord of all. You know, the Bible reveals that throughout the early church, it was the Jews who stirred up the Romans and the others, and the, the Ephesians, the, the Greeks, everywhere that Paul went, it was the Jews that stirred up people to hate the Christians, to kill, to torture, to persecute Christians. Of course, Jesus cautioned us about this. He said, the time will come, quote, that whosoever killeth you will thinketh that he doeth God's service. 
And the Jews, in their zealotry, believed they were doing God's service. You'll remember that even the Apostle Paul, before he was converted to Christ, thought he was doing God a service. He was one of the zealots. He was glad to be killing the Christians, such as Stephen, for what he thought was their abomination. And yet, on that road to Damascus, that light came to him, and God's Spirit entered him and made him an apostle to the Gentiles. Well, my friends, throughout the centuries, Christians have been killed. Now, the Jews are not responsible for all of the deaths of the Christians. That is not so at all. We know about the great inquisitions of the Catholic Church, for example. But we do know that it was the Jews for uh, for, for many, many hundreds of years early on who so hated the Christians and sought in every way they could to bring evil into the lives of the Christians. Now, one thing we need to know is this. Anyone who hates God so much, they will preach that Jesus was born to a whore and preach that Jesus is bawling in excrement in hell, and that's what the Jews teach in their Talmud, and say such horrible things of blasphemy against him has to be of the Antichrist. Now, let me explain what it says in 1 John chapter 4. It says, Beloved Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Oh, even in those early days, the Apostle John, all of the apostles were being greatly persecuted. Fiery times awaited every Christian, said Peter in the Bible. Because these people believed not that Jesus Christ had come in the flesh as God. And so they began to persecute the Christians who believed this. And John said, they are of the spirit of Antichrist. Chapter 5, verse 10, John says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Verse 12, He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Oh, do you understand the significance here? Some say, well, the Jews can get to heaven if they obey the law. But there is none righteous, no, not one, the Bible says. Let me tell you what the Bible says, not what you think. The Bible says, he that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Friends, if you have not Jesus, you are a walking dead man. Now, we're going to get into a study now of what city the Antichrist will come from. You may be surprised. A lot of people say it will be Rome. The Catholic Pope will be the Antichrist. Martin Luther, of course, taught that. And thus, the new Roman Empire will be where the Antichrist proceeds from, and the capital of Rome, where sits the Vatican. That will be the seat where, uh, the, where Satan dwells. Let's see, though, what the Bible has to say about that. You see, in Revelation 17, it talks about this great woman who sat on a scarlet-covered beast, having seven heads and ten horns full of names of blasphemy. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. It says, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. You see, John was absolutely surprised. He was shocked. He almost, I mean, you can almost admire evil for its unbelievable nature. Why was he so shocked? Why did he say, I wondered? With great admiration. He was, it was, it was marvelous. It was incredible. It was, it was practically, it was stunning what he saw. 
Because John was given the identity. The angel said unto him, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Now, first of all, we get right there. You see, in John's age, the book of Revelation was written about about uh, A.D. 95. Already, Jerusalem had been destroyed by the Romans, and uh, the temple had been broken down, every stone on top of another, just as Jesus had prophesied. And many, many thousands of uh, of Jew, Jews were taken captive. In other words, the Romans says, Good riddance to Jerusalem, the Jews, and to Israel. It is no more. John himself, of course, was banished to the Isle of Patmos. As an old man there, he was given this great vision by God of the things of the last days. And he saw this beast. Now look at the beast. It says, The beast thou sawest was... Now this was in the days of John. Now, follow this very carefully. John is being told, here is the situation in the world now. Consider this. Rome is the greatest empire on the face of the planet. Rome has destroyed Jerusalem. And here is what John is told. The beast that thou sawest was and is not. Well, now, if the beast is Rome, that would not match. Because it said, the beast thou sawest is not. But Rome was and is at the time of John. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Who is going to ascend out of the bottomless pit? The beast. But the beast did not exist in the day of John. That's very clear from Revelation 17 verse 8. The beast had existed, it was. But it did not exist during the day of John's revelation. Because it says, it is not, but it shall ascend. In other words, it was, was, and is not, but shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Now, who is that that comes up out of the bottomless pit? The beast. How can we identify this beast that comes up out of the bottomless pit? Oh, my friends, Revelation tells us about this great beast that comes up out of the pit. For you see, in Revelation 9, it tells us that when the bottomless pit is opened, there will arise a smoke out of the pit. And out of the smoke will come great demon beast in the form of locust and uh, uh, other things. And they will torment the men and women and children of the earth. It says, verse 11, Now these are the demons that come up out of the bottomless pit in the last days. The bottomless pit is opened, and they ascend up out of the pit. Revelation chapter 9. It says, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. Oh, my friends, there is a creature who is the king of the devils from hell. Oh, this is another name. One more name for the devil. His name, Abba Don. Now, let me explain that to you. Abba in Hebrew means father. Don means one of great power, also known as Dan. For Don and Dan are in, or, or interchangeable names. Don, in fact, is a derivative of the name Dan. For it was Dan, head of one of the tribes of Israel, who demanded great respect from the people of his tribe. And so he began to be called Dan or Don. So, one of the names of Satan is Father Don or Father Dan. It's interesting to me that many people have talked in ancient history that the lost tribe of Dan, the tribe of Dan, migrated over to Europe. And even the names of places in Europe 
indicate that Dan traveled over into Europe. There is the Danube River. There is the nation today of Denmark or Denmark. You know, I went back and I studied the history of the Druids in England, and I found that they were called the children of Danan, Dan and Ann. Now, Ann was the great goddess of the Egyptians. She was the great mother goddess, the earth goddess. And supposedly, Dan and she became united as one. And so we have the children of Danan, and they sacrificed human beings to their great sun god there at Stonehenge. If you're thirsty and dry, look to the sky, it's beginning to rain. You've been listening to Pastor Tex Mars and Bible Home Church. Please join with us in worship next week as we continue to honor the remarkable Word of God. Friends, this is Tex Mars, inviting you to worship with us today at Bible Home Church, coming to you from Austin, Texas. Hello, dear friends. It's great to be with you today. We're going to be continuing our series. In fact, today is going to be the last segment. We're going to conclude with the question, will the Antichrist be a Jew? Will the Antichrist be a Jew? It's fascinating, of course, that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, came in the flesh, according to Matthew 1, as Emmanuel, God with us. He came to the nation of Israel. Now, that means the people of Israel and uh, even to the physical uh, nation or state of Israel, but he was not received by the Jewish people except for only a few, including the apostles. And of course, we know that, as the Bible says, of all of those who say they are Jews, there are many which are not Jews at all and are of the synagogue of Satan. For the apostle Paul told us very clearly that circumcision was not of the flesh, but of the heart. And uh, it says clearly in uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, if ye be Christ's, in other words, if you belong to Jesus Christ, if you're of him, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs to the promise. So those who claim to be true Jews claim to be heirs to the promise, claim to be Abraham's seed, were not truly Abraham's seed, and their physical circumcision availed them absolutely nothing. And the fact is that they were cursed by God. Unless they repented and accepted the true Messiah, Jesus Christ. But they would have nothing to do with him. In fact, they cried out to the uh, Romans, to Pilate, crucify him. And so we have a terrible situation in which it is evident. The Bible clearly shows, as we've been preaching these last several weeks here at Bible Home Church, clearly the Antichrist who will mimic, who will counterfeit, who will blaspheme the true Christ, Jesus. Yes, the Antichrist will come from that same race and thus will prove the adage that there is nothing good in man. 
And my friends, listen to me. The only way you can be without spot or wrinkle is to know Jesus Christ. And if you know him, he's the one who's ironed out the wrinkles. He's the one who has washed you whiter than snow. You don't have the spots. You don't have the stains of sin through Jesus Christ and only him. And this Antichrist is, is to come will claim that you don't need Christ. Believe in him. He will claim he is the true Messiah and King of Israel. Inheritor of the throne of Solomon and David. He will be the successor to Father Abraham. And he will deceive the multitudes. And particularly the Jews. Most of them because they're looking for him. I had a radio show host some years ago who's a Jewish man. He said, Tex, you and I believe just alike. I said, we do. He said, yes. We both believe in the Messiah. He said, the only difference, of course, and that's so minor in his understanding, he claimed. The only difference, he said, Tex Mars, is that as a Jew, I believe in the Messiah to come and you believe in the Messiah that's already come. And I told him that makes all the difference in the world. We don't believe alike at all. For there is only one name, it says in Philippians, by which we may be saved. And that name is Jesus. Well, he didn't like that at all. In fact, he really, he got just hot under the collar at me. I remember we took a break. I think it was a two-hour radio program in Houston, Texas. And we took a break and, oh, he was just so angry. He said to me, well, I want you to know, as far as I'm concerned, Jesus should have stayed a Jew. And not turned Christian. I said, my friend, he never turned Christian. He never turned anything. He was always what he was. God in the flesh. He said, no, he wasn't God. And he shouldn't have left the fold of Judaism. And I said, he never was in the fold of Judaism. <laughs> he was God. He didn't have to have a, a Judaic religion based on the Talmud. And uh, I told this gentleman as nice as I, I could. The fact was that Jesus did stay a Jew, a spiritual Jew. In fact, he's the, he's the head. He's the, he's, he's the cornerstone of the true Jew who is not circumcised, who doesn't care about his race. You see, my friends, listen, a Christian cannot possibly be a racist because out of many different bloods, Jesus Christ has chosen his family. And he's going to give us the body of his choice someday. Isn't that going to be a shocker? The body of his choice. That's right. You're going to receive an immortal body. This one is going to pass. You can't hold on to it. My friends, you can go down and the people who, you know, freeze bodies after death to try to Keep them together, hoping someday that advances in medical science will come about and they can unfreeze the body and cure the person of whatever sickness or disease he or she died from. Baloney. Listen to me. When your body dies, your spirit is gone. And you're either in hell or you're in heaven. <laughs> and that's the way it is. Hebrews 9 verse 27 says that it is appointed for a man once to die. Afterwards, the judgment. You're not going to live again and then die again. No, no, no. You're either going to receive eternal life through being born again in this existence or you're going to go to hell. And either way, you're going to live wherever you're going forever. Two directions. There is a fork in the road. My friends, have you reached that fork today? Maybe so. If you've reached that fork in the road, friends, you can go the road that's more traveled or the road that's less traveled. I pray you'll take the less travel. Now, we're going to, as I said, we're going to have that last segment. But right now, we've got a beautiful song. I've always loved this song. And, you know, there's, it seems like almost every other uh, gospel group has to sing this. Southern gospel group has to sing this song. Why? Well, they all love it, just like I do. 
And if you haven't heard it before, I think you will love it too. It's the lighthouse. And you know, Jesus Christ is the lighthouse, isn't he? And he's greater than this Antichrist to come. He's greater than any force of evil. And I love this song because it points to Jesus Christ. And he is the true. You need to know who the true Messiah is. I know the Jews are looking for another Messiah. That's the Antichrist. Listen to me. They're looking for him and they're going to get him. You look for something, you'll find it, my friends. The devil will put it in play. But what you want to do is look out for that lighthouse. Are you on stormy waters? Are you on uncharted seas? Are you having trouble in your life? Things going bad for you? Do you have fears and worries, concerns? Well, don't worry at all. Through the storm, through all of the darkness and the rain, you just look straight ahead. And pretty soon, if you really want to find it, there'll be a lighthouse. Here are the Henson singing the lighthouse. There's a lighthouse on the hillside. That overlooks life's sea When I'm tossed It seems out of life That I might see And the light that shines In darkness now Will safely lead us over If it wasn't for the lighthouse my ship would be no more everybody that lives around us says tear that lighthouse down the big ships they don't sail by this way anymore ain't no use it's standing round Then my mind goes back To that stormy night When just in time I seen the light Yes, the light From that old lighthouse That stands up there on the hill In pagan history, in occult history, we find that they would dance there at Stonehenge and have great uh, drunken orgies and revelings there at the time they sacrificed to the devil. And it was called the Dance of the Giants. Now, even the very word dance comes from Dan. The drunken revelings and dances they come from the word Dan. Dan, dance. You'll know about that dance of the giants if you read Revelation, where it, or excuse me, Genesis, where it talks about there were giants in those days. And that was in the days of Noah. And uh, we could talk a lot about those giants and who they were. But many Bible scholars believe those giants, that identification was of dark angels who took to themselves beautiful women, and thus was God angered, and thus came the Noahic flood. In any case, we do know that the angel of the bottomless pit, the king over them, his name in the Hebrew tongue is Abba Don, or Abba Dan. Now, some people say, Tex, I don't understand. I understood that 
the, the great city of Mystery Babylon would be Rome. You're saying it, it is Jerusalem? Yes, it is Jerusalem. But isn't Rome the city that sits on seven hills, you ask? And doesn't Revelation chapter 17 mention that the seven heads of the beast are seven mountains upon which the woman sitteth? Yes, they are. Did you know that there are three cities? There are actually many, uh, there's several more. But there are three key cities on earth that have seven mountains within their proximities. One city is Rome, yes. The city built on seven hills. Another city, a second city with seven hills or mountain ranges or mountains is Moscow in Russia. And get this, friends. A third city with seven mountains is the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, seven mountains. Now, verse 18 of chapter 17 of Revelation says, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Here was the city that commits fornications with all the kings of the earth. The city known as Mystery Babylon, that great city. Let me read to you what Peter had to say. This is from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 13. He ends his letter in this way. He says, The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus, my son. You know, we can all agree that Peter was the head of the church at Jerusalem. You know what the early Christians called Jerusalem? Babylon. It was so evil. You see, there was Herod. He killed James, the brother of Jesus. Herod, of course, was the one that had his son and had Jesus himself crucified in that he cast Jesus back off to, to Pilate. And then Pilate, of course, gave it Jesus over uh, to the people's will rather than Barabbas to be crucified. But here was the wicked city. They had stoned the prophets. They had stoned many of the early Christians and did horrible deeds to them, such as young Stephen, the witness and evangelist who was stoned there at Jerusalem. They had taken in Peter and the others and taken them in and, 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 and the, the high court, the Sanhedrin, had ordered them not to preach the name of the Jesus, uh, of Jesus anymore, and they had beat them. To which Peter replied, I must obey God and not man. Oh yes, Peter and the apostles all knew that the wicked city was not Rome, but was Jerusalem. And so, he said, the church that is at Babylon salutes you. He was saying, I'm at Babylon. This is the wicked city wherein, of course, our Lord was crucified. You say, do what text? Yes, yes. You, you know, one of the things that you have to understand is that Babylon, that mighty city, will be destroyed in the last days. Revelation 18 says, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. It will fall twice. Well, how does that relate to Jerusalem? Do you not remember that Jerusalem fell, just as Jesus prophesied, 70 A.D., when Titus of Rome came in and demolished the city, took away the Jews captive? That was the first fall, but now in the last days, Jerusalem, regrettably, will fall again. Now, let's keep going. Did you know that Revelation 18 says of Mystery Babylon... That quote, in Rev this is verse 24, In her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all them that were slain upon the earth. Now this is the, the chief way, by the way, friends, if you really want to get down to it, if anybody says to you, surely Jerusalem could not be, earthly Jerusalem that is, could not be mystery Babylon. That's crazy, I've never heard of such a thing. Well, let's get to what the Bible has identified. Revelation 18, verse 24. And in her, that is, this great city, was found the blood of prophets and of saints 
and of all that were slain upon the earth. What city could that be? Well, let's just listen to Jesus. Matthew twenty three thirty five. Here is an astonishing prophecy of Jesus. Jesus talking to the Jews, telling the Jews flat out what their destiny was. He said to them these words, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom he slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. And by the way, my friends, that word generation there means that race, that generation, that race. Just go to the, the Greek word there for generation, and you will find it means a race of people. All these things shall come upon the Jewish race, he's saying. The uh, uh, King James Bible has it generation, which is exactly right. And that means the generation. That means the people that were generated. That's how the, the, the English people spoke and used the word race at that time. It was generation. Jesus said, upon you may come all the righteous blood upon the earth. He accused the Pharisees of killing the prophets that were sent to them and the righteous men. What does it say in Revelation 18 of Mystery Babylon? And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Well, the same thing here. Jesus is saying that upon you may come all the righteous blood. How much? All the righteous blood. You see, the Jews say we're not responsible for Jesus' death. And if we were, it was very indirect. We didn't do it. The Romans did. We cried out for the Romans to kill him. That's true. But they are the ones that did it. And Goodness gracious, friends. In a conspiracy to murder somebody, all the conspirators are equally guilty. You know, Charles Manson didn't kill anybody. He didn't kill anybody. There's no proof whatsoever that Charles Manson killed anybody. But he was convicted of conspiracy to commit murder. He's guilty. Just as guilty as his disciples that went out and did the foul, dirty deeds. My friends, read Revelation 18, verse 24, and read Matthew 23, 35, and you cannot but come up with uh, on this explanation. Upon the Jews is the guilt for all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. That's what Jesus said. And in verse 24 of Revelation 18, it says, And her, Mystery Babylon, was found the blood of all that were slain upon the earth. Hey, same wording. There it is. No dispute whatsoever. That's the way it is, friends. You say, well, I, I thought that Jerusalem was going to be a wonderful city. I didn't know it would be the city, this horrible king, the Antichrist, who would worship the God of forces rather than the God of his fathers. I never knew that, that Jerusalem, I, I thought that was the holy city, friends. That city was holy until Jesus was slain on the cross. And don't you remember what happened? Oh, my friends, the ark left. Oh, the ark of the covenant was gone. And, and, and the veil of the temple was rent and there was an earthquake and God's Holy Spirit left. Now they can build all the temples they want there now. They can build all the synagogues they want. They can be made of the most majestic uh, substances, wood, gold, metal, glass. They can look like 26,000 crystal cathedrals and 98 St. John the Divine Cathedrals and 25 uh, uh, St. Peter's. It doesn't matter all combined. It doesn't matter. God will not reside there. And Jerusalem will be that most wicked city on earth in the last days. And I believe that's exactly where the Antichrist will dwell. What proof do I have? Revelation 11. Revelation 11 says that the two witnesses will be slain in that city. Their dead bodies, it says in verse 8, shall lie in the street of this great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. You understand that, my friends? What city was our Lord crucified? Jerusalem. And what does God, in His Holy Word, Revelation 11, verse 8, what does He call that city where our Lord was crucified, Jerusalem? Spiritually, He gave it a name. It's called Sodom and Egypt. The two worst names you could get. How would you like to be called Sodom? Egypt. Oh, my friends, but you have to understand 
that Jerusalem, the church of Jerusalem, is not even mentioned in the book of Revelation. Read chapter 1, verse 11. It talks about the seven churches. Jerusalem is not there. It's not there. Well, what about Jerusalem? Oh, my friends, read Revelation 21. There is the holy city. There is a new Jerusalem, a new Jerusalem, not the old Jerusalem, not the earthly, not the planetary, a heavenly Jerusalem. It's coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Oh, I love this. It says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God shall be with them and be their God. Verse 10 says, And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Oh, friends, don't get it into your mind that this earthly Jerusalem, this wicked Sodom and Egypt place where the Antichrist will be and dwell and come to power and not worship the God of his fathers and will blaspheme our Lord Jesus Christ as the Jews do today. My friends... Please understand, there's another, a greater city. Oh, yes, the code name is still Jerusalem, but it is the heavenly Jerusalem. Verse 22 says, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. My friends, God himself is a temple. Do you understand that? The city had no need of the sun nor of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Friends, that's the ultimate, isn't it? Now, friends, what should we do of this knowledge? Yes, the Antichrist will be a Jew. Jesus said he would. Daniel said he would. Revelation reveals that so. Paul said so in 2 Thessalonians 2. He alluded to it at least. What are we to do about that knowledge? I believe we should pray. We should pray for the Jews. Oh, I believe many of them are going to suffer great tribulation in the last days. Oh, put hatred out of the way. Put dislike. Put despising of Jews out of the way. Love these people. Reach as many as we can in these last days before it's too late. But never, never let anybody call you an anti-Semite for telling the truth. Because God's word is truth. Well, friends, again, this is Tex Mars. And that was the conclusion to our uh, series, Will the Antichrist Be a Jew? I want to encourage you to write us and give us your comments and let us know, too, if you're praying for us. And if we can pray for you, it would be a privilege and an honor to do so. If there's any prayer need that you have, let us know, would you? Well, until next week, this is Pastor Tex Mars. I appreciate your listening to Bible Home Church. I pray it's been a blessing to you. And tune in next week as we begin an exciting new series in God's Majestic Word. If you're thirsty and dry, look to the sky, it's beginning to rain. You've been listening to Pastor Tex Mars and Bible Home Church. Please join with us in worship next week as we continue to honor the remarkable Word of God.